Attention fellow developers! Have you guys ever wondered how to build and host your own application using Docker? Well, wonder no more. My name's Jameson, and today I'm going to guide you on how to build and host your own application within Docker. Let's go ahead and get started. What is Docker? Docker is an open source platform for building, shipping, and running applications in a container. It was first released in 2013 and has since become one of the most widely used containerization platforms in the world. Docker provides a simple and flexible way to build and manage containerized applications with a powerful set of tools and APIs for deploying, scaling, and managing containers at scale. Docker also provides a rich ecosystem of third-party tools and plugins that extends its functionality. A Docker Compose file is a YAML file that defines a multi-container Docker application. It allows developers to define and configure multiple services that make up an application, such as web servers, databases, and backend services in a single file. With a Docker Compose file, developers can easily deploy and manage complex multi-container applications with a single command. What I'd like to go ahead and do is build a Docker container with you guys, or you know what? More specifically, I would like to build a Docker image. And then from that Docker image, what we're gonna go ahead and do is deploy a Docker container, which is going to be hosting a very simple HTML file, which is gonna be called index.html. And all this file is, is just a very simple My Portfolio web page, you know, just a web page for if someone wanted to learn a little bit more about you. Uh, and then what we're gonna do with this web page is host it on the container, forward it to our local computer, and then access it, and then I'll show you guys how you would be able to, you know, check a, uh, a little bit of what's going on in there and how you would be able to populate changes from your local computer over to that container. But you know what? Let's just go ahead and jump right in. First thing we're going to need to go ahead and do is build our Docker image. And how we're going to do that is by using this Docker file which is just specifying three very simple commands. This from command, which is pulling the base httpd Apache image over from Docker Hub. The second uh, line, which is gonna go ahead and copy this HTML file from my local host over to the um, image. And then uh, this very last line, which is helping to expose uh, port 80 of my container to traffic. So if I right click on my folder and open an integrated terminal, I can just go ahead and run my build command first. And I'll go ahead and name it my web app latest. And then when we're done, all we have to do is just tag it with this dot at the very end. We'll see that this image built. And another thing I'd like to note uh, is this latest that I went ahead and uh, put at the very end after a colon. So what this part is just basically saying is that I'm tagging this image that I'm building, this image called my web app with the latest tag. And um, we use tags in Docker just to kind of version our images. And um, one of the conventions with Docker is whenever you come out with the latest version, you can just tag it with the latest tag. And you'll see the same is mentioned up here with the Apache image that we uh, pulled from earlier. Okay, now that I actually have my image built, the next step is going to be to actually run our container. And how we would be able to do that is by doing the docker run command. And I'm going to build on this docker run command by adding a few um, flags to it. 
The very first flag I would like to add is going to be this D flag. And this D flag is going to basically mean we're running this container in detached mode. So what that means is by default, Docker will run a container for you in attached mode. And what that means is that it'll run whatever the starting command of your Docker uh, container uh, within, it'll basically take over your terminal and show you what's going on within that uh, run command that your container is running off of. Um, which is very useful for debugging. However, the fact that it kind of takes over the terminal is going to be a little messy, especially for this example. So I'm going to go ahead and run it in the background or in detached mode. The next flag I'm going to go ahead and pass it is going to be this RM flag, which is just going to specify that I would like to remove this container when I'm done with it. Another uh, thing Docker will do for you by default is it will go ahead and um, whenever you need to stop a container or you're done running a container, you'll need to put it in the stop state by giving it the docker stop command. And then if you would like to clean up the resources from there, you would have to uh, give it the docker remove command. Uh, the issue with this is that you cannot by convention remove a running container, which is good and bad in and of itself. Um, so one way you can remove that extra step of needing to stop a container before removing it is just by passing it this RM flag, which just specifies that when I stop this container, you can just go ahead and remove it afterwards. I don't need it. The next flag I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys is gonna be this P flag, which is gonna be the port forwarding flag. And what this flag is gonna be doing is just forwarding from port 80 of my container. As I mentioned earlier, the traffic of this is gonna be running on port 80, and it's going to forward this from port 80 of the container over to port 8080 of my local host computer. And then for the very last flag, I'd like to specify is gonna be the name flag. And by, um, you know, probably just comments that you can probably tell, it's just gonna be me naming my container, and I'm gonna go ahead and name it very simply my container. And then last thing is just specifying what image I'd like to use for this container, and it's going to be the My Web App. Okay, once I have all that defined, next thing is going to be to go ahead and press run. Okay, awesome. We can tell that this ran successfully because it just spits out this long string of text. And what this is, is just going to be the container ID. And that's what's uh, printed out whenever you run your container in detached mode. So if I do a Docker PS, which will pull up all of my currently running containers, we'll see I have two currently running. I have this first one and the second one, but we're just going to focus on this first one, my container. Here's that ID I mentioned earlier. Here's the image we specified. Here's the command that it's actually running. And we don't see this, but this is actually specified in this base image. And then we see this last line here, which is just gonna be that port 8080 to port 80, uh, port forwarding I mentioned earlier. So let's go ahead and first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to check the logs of my container just to see what's going on in there. So if I do a Docker logs and pass it the name of my container, we can see a little bit of what's going on. So this is gonna be what's going on with pretty much um, the initial command that this container is running. So as I mentioned earlier, here is that httpd foreground command that um, this base image is running that we didn't see uh, kind of referenced. Okay, but it doesn't look like anything's really generally stopping it from running, so that's good. Uh, so now that my container is running, let's say I actually want to connect to my application. How would I do that? So I can do that by actually just opening up a browser window. And I can do that from Visual Studio Code if you have the uh, Microsoft Edge tools. 
extension installed, you can just go ahead and open that up and it'll actually allow you to open up a browser from within Visual Studio Code. But you can do this from whatever browser you want or um, it doesn't necessarily need to be from Visual Studio. It can be whatever browser you're used to using, so Firefox, Chrome, whatever, as long as you can connect to your local host. So if I refresh this, you'll see this actually corresponds to the index.html file that I uh, had created. And like I mentioned earlier, I actually reloaded this page a couple times. So if I run the logs command again, we'll see a couple of get requests. So that actually uh, populated whenever I press the reload. So that's something very important to note. And that's actually um, something you can do to make sure that changes actually have been populated within your container. And the next thing I'd actually like to show you guys, or and the final thing, is how we would be able to uh, populate some changes within this, uh, within this container. Because I mean, this is cool and all, and this is very useful. But let's say I wanted to make a change to this uh, index.html file, or uh, I guess my portfolio page. Uh, in so if I wanted to make a change, what I would need to do is make the change within this file, go over, rebuild my image, and then rerun the container and do all of these steps, which is gonna be very long and annoying and windy. So another thing we can do is actually just copy over this file over to the container. And uh, Docker allows us to do this by using the Docker CP command. Let's go ahead and make a change. Uh, at the very bottom, let's go ahead and add my name to this copyright. So copyright, gems, and website. Ooh, if I can ever figure out how to spell website. Okay, there we go. Okay, jams website. And then next, first thing I'm gonna do is specify what I'm trying to copy over. Let me save this file. And I'm copying over my index.html file from this week two folder. Okay, next, what I need to do is specify where I'm trying to copy this over to. And I'm trying to copy this over to my container. So I just need to name that I'm trying to copy this over to my container. I need to next give it a colon. And then finally, I need to tell it where I'm trying to copy this over in my container. So it's going to be this original directory that we specified early on. And again, I'm just going to name it index.html. So just like you were, if you were trying to um, copy a file over on your computer using um, shell script. And if I press enter, that command should have ran. So if I actually run a reload on my browser window, we'll see now the Jams website has now been populated. And that's how you can uh, populate the very simple change on uh, your Docker container. And there's lots of other things that you're able to do using Docker and some of these Docker commands, but just wanted to show you guys a very simple way of hosting an application. Um, and once we're done, we can very simply clean up by running the Docker stop and pass it my container. And that will go ahead and stop and remove the container and all the resources as well. And I can confirm that it's been cleaned up by doing a Docker PS. Okay, that's it for today's video, guys. I would totally love it if you guys could comment, like, and subscribe. And if you guys have any ideas about some cool stuff you can create using Docker, please let me know down below. And I'll see you guys next time.